Hi, this is Sudhir from Accio. Now, lead scoring is one of the biggest wins in marketing that came with the digital revolution. At Accio, our marketing team uses our own predictive modeling tied with our HubSpot instance to automate this process. And we even automatically notify our sales team of high quality leads via Slack. So let me quickly show you what that Slack integration looks like. I'm gonna go up here and open a Slack channel. And what we see is that this is connected up to our own internal HubSpot instance, where as new leads come in, we assign them either a low fit or a high fit. And the idea here being that depending on the fit that we assign or that the predictive model is generating for us, we can route it to the appropriate sales team. And so today we're going to be working through how we can get this, you know, lead prospect lead data into Accio. How can we explore the data, develop a machine learning, a predictive model, and then deploy it back out into our HubSpot instance, where we can then, you know, score the leads and tie that into Slack. Okay. So let's jump into Accio. All right. So the first step, right, is to access our data and import our data. So there's a variety of different um, sources that we can bring our data in. Here you can see that we have different data warehouses like Snowflake, Google BigQuery, Postgres SQL. But for this particular application, you know, lead scoring, oftentimes that data is stored in a CRM. So we can connect directly up into Salesforce or HubSpot. Now, I'm not gonna be showing the workflow with our own HubSpot instance. And the reason it has you know, our own client information that, you know, is secure that we do not want to show. And so for this particular example, we're going to be bringing in a publicly available lead scoring data set, showing the workflow in a very similar approach to what we do internally. And then how does that tie back into that HubSpot integration? Okay, so let's go into that data set. All right. So what we have here, and again, as I said, this is publicly available data, but very, very similar data to the original HubSpot, right? Where we have prospect ID, right? For individual prospects that are coming in, information about their lead origin, right? Was it a landing page submission, API, lead ad form, things like the lead source. Did they email? Did they not email? Did they call? Did they not call? And a variety of other you know, variables in here, right? Some of it is some survey data. It's a total time spent on website, page views per website, etc. Now, the most important column here, right? What we're going to be ultimately predicting, right? Is this converted column, right? So the idea here is as new prospects come in, we're going to assign it either a low fit, right? Did not convert or a high fit. Right? They're more likely to convert as well as the probabilities associated with each one of these. Okay. Now we can take a look at this data. It is pretty clean, right? So I'm not going to do any sort of data pre-processing today. If you do want to do this, of course, you can go into chat data prep, make your data squeaky clean using natural language or using our data cleaner for some lightweight data touches like standardizing date columns, removing unexpected nulls, flagging outliers, etc. So Again, we have this, we have this data set here. Now there are some questions that I want to ask before we go into actually developing our predictive model, right? I might want to understand, you know, what are the top lead origins, right? That have a high conversion rate or lead sources, right? Um, and so to do that, we can quickly go over to our explore, right, our chat explore to answer any of those questions, right? So I can say something like, show me the top lead origin based on conversion rate in a chart, right? I want this in a chart instead of a table. Of course, we can change that, right? And we can see here in a bar chart that quick ad form and lead ad form have the highest conversion rate rather than, you know, a landing page submission or an API or a lead in. So this is interesting, right? We might want to dig in deeper to understand why do these ad forms perform better than maybe a landing page submission. API might make sense, right? They might be a more power users, maybe already in the product, right? Um, so again, some information that we present to you right away. Now, of course, if we wanted to start 
you know, tracking this over time, create our own interactive dashboards, right? We can quickly go save that over to reports. And you can see I already did this a couple of times. So there's the same visualization here, but you can start building out your own pseudo dashboard. Okay. And of course I can add it, share it with others, et cetera. But what we're really interested in today is developing that machine learning model, right? How can as new prospect comes in, be able to predict whether they're going to convert or not. And I want to quickly go back to the data, right? And highlight this column, right? This is going to be our response. This is going to be what we want to predict is this converted column. So let's go over to the model tab and take a look at our options. So I'm going to go ahead and select converted, right? Which is what I want to predict. And I'm going to go ahead and ignore prospect ID and lead number as those don't have really an impact in our model. Now, for the sake of time, I've already trained the model here, and this is what we call our insights report, right? information about how the model performed and certain driving factors and segment analysis to help understand why the model is predicting what it is. So right off the bat, we get our accuracy. We can see our model is 94.8% accurate. If you're curious, you can look at our accuracy details to understand, you know, our confusion matrix, right? What are our true positives, right? What are our false positives, true negatives, false negatives. And if you come from a data science or a, a statistics background, these terms like precision, recall, and F1 score will ring a bell. And if you're even curious about what model we trained, we can go to advanced model details and see multi-layer neural network. That's the model that we selected. Now, one of the most important parts of this report, right, getting into understanding the why behind these predictions is in our driving factor analysis or our top fields. So here, and this is really important for organizations to understand what parts of our inputs are either driving a positive impact on conversion rate or a negative. Okay, so for example here, interesting enough, when the tag says, we'll revert after reading the email, Right, this has almost a positive 40% increase in probability for predicting a lead will convert than not. So that's interesting. We might want to dig in in Chat Explorer. Why does this tag have a high impact on conversion rate? Right, This is what the model is seeing. We can go down on total time spent on website and say, this makes sense, right? The more amount of time that we spend right, on the website, it has a positive around 20% uh, likelihood um, increase of this lead converting. That makes sense. The less amount of time that you spend on that website, right? It has a negative impact on the lead converting, right? You might be on it for a short amount of time. It might not be exactly what you want and you might leave. The more amount of time you might be investigating this further and maybe you like what you see, right? And then you subscribe. So in some of that driving factor analysis, there are a few other reports in here. The other one I wanted to highlight is the segments, right? Especially for a lead scoring example, it's really important to understand are there particular demographics within my broader population that we should be targeting, right? That are highly likely to convert. And we can take a look at that here where, you know, over here we have high engagement or high likelihood of conversion and take a look at that population and understand are there patterns. Now, again, this is not, you know, causation. This is not saying this particular profile, right, of a lead will always convert. It's just surfacing patterns that you might want to look out for. So here for the key similarities, a lead profile being a lateral student, the last activity being approached up front, a lead source being click to call, right? So if we see a, you know, a prospect come in with, you know, these inputs, right, we might want to prioritize them for, you know, a customer that's likely to convert. Now, this is all great, right? We're investigating the model, we're investing in the data a little bit more. How do we actually use the model in production, right? How did I get those model and those prediction results into HubSpot and ultimately into Slack? Okay. So we can navigate over to the deployments tab. And in here, there are a variety of uh, ways that we can integrate our results back into our data source or data warehouse or CRM. Of course, we you know, we'll deploy a production ready API that you can call, right? We have a bunch of documentation around this, right? For more of the developer persona that want to have custom integrations with their own, you know, applications or web pages, et cetera, right? Or we can deploy back into 
your CRM. So for example, back into HubSpot, right? This is what we're using. We're developing a model and deploying that back out, right? And so in this particular case, you would connect up your HubSpot data set. Where do you want to push it back out? In this case, contacts, right? Set your scheduler, your deployment. Do you want to run on deploy? Do you want to present those probabilities, et cetera? Okay. Now I'm not going to show it because we already have our model running in production. I don't want to touch anything or break anything in the back end. So again, thank you. Thank you for listening. You know, and that's how you can quickly use AI right, to score incoming leads.